Hello, this is Professor Miller Michel from Stellenbosch University and we want you to give us an overview of your life as a scientist and maybe some tips uh, for posterity, future scientists. And this questionnaire is going to begin straight away and I'm going to ask you a few generic questions and maybe some that might be a little bit more personal. So feel free to express yourself as best as you as you can and yes so what would you say is the greatest achievement you have made so far I actually think that uh, my greatest contribution or achievement has been training young scientists I think that we can all make our contributions through the work that we do in our research and for instance I I'm doing a lot of work with wildlife and tuberculosis, but my greatest achievement, I think, will be what my students are going to do going out and kind of uh, multiplying my efforts. What are your research interests and why? Okay. So my research interests are in animal tuberculosis, particularly in African wildlife. And the reason for that is that I got started looking at that question because I was a, a zoo veterinarian and we began to see problems clinically, particularly in animals like elephants. And the question came up, is this something that is uh, only seen in, in human managed animals or is it a bigger problem for wildlife? And as we know over the last few decades, we we can see that more and more tuberculosis is a disease of multiple hosts. We know the impact in humans, but in animals, of course, um, in cattle and livestock, that's been an issue for a long time. But now we're really starting to recognize what a significant impact it has on wildlife as well. Great. So we can see here not only your interest, but how much you contribute to the field and in, in bridging those gaps that we have uh, with respect to human research as well as uh, as um, uh, research on on, on 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 wildlife. So we'll proceed with uh, uh, trying to know why you choose the field of immunology. Is there any particular reason, any story to tell about that? I think. My interest in immunology was uh, actually goes way back when I was an undergraduate um, studying uh, zoology and biology and I took an immunology course and I realized that this is a field that really impacts everything in biology. If we understand host responses and our responses to both infectious diseases and our environment, then we're going to have a better idea of exactly how we interact in our environment and, and with each other. So it's really, I think, uh, a bridging science that goes beyond um, probably almost any other science. So what would be your advice for students that are finishing their PhD? So I think the biggest thing you can say is keep learning, keep an open mind. Um, your professional career is not going to be a linear path. You're going to be able to explore a lot of different ideas. And even if you do a PhD in immunology, think about all of the other fields that can um, help you become a better, a better scientist, a better global citizen. We talked a little bit earlier, things like public health. Yeah. Um, understanding ecology, environmental sciences, medicine, all of those things that can really make you a, a much better scientist in the end. What would you be your advice to undergraduate students interested in pursuing research in immunology? So I think as an undergraduate you have the whole world in front of you to explore. And again, don't feel like you need to choose one over another. You know, you have your whole life to learn, whether that's um, informal education, such as postgraduate studies, or if you're not sure, take the opportunity and try and 
and maybe get a, uh, a summer job or an experience working in the field so you can explore it and see really what what triggers your interest and makes you enthusiastic. What about early career scientists? As early career scientists, one of the biggest things that can help you and, and also um, helps others is by networking. So going to conferences, meeting people, uh, meeting people in your university, other people in your field, and, and sharing your interest and enthusiasm. Um, you also get a lot of feedback from you know, more senior people in the field, but they get excited about the future when you share your interests. If you were to recommend something to young scientists, specifically working within the African continent, what would those be? There's a lot of challenges for young scientists working in the African country, and, and particularly it's um, access to opportunities, funding, uh, those type of, of challenges to even find out what's available. I think that, again, talk to, talk to people that you respect, that you trust, um, seniors in um, your, your university or your high school that can provide um, introductions to other people that can that facilitate that pathway. Um, I, I think that having strong basic science and math and just creative problem solving skills, you're going to get a long way using those. Great. So what have been your biggest difficulties in conducting research? I'm sure you have some. <laughs> and, and then I'll give you a second uh, arm to this question. Uh, what challenges out of all of these do you think are inherent to the fact that you're doing research that is specific to you, that is um, animal wildlife research and TB? So I think researchers or scientists in general experience some similar challenges. One of those, of course, are uh, funding. We all need money to, to do our research, and that can oftentimes be frustrating or take a lot of time. Um, I think it's important that people recognize that that's, that's part of our jobs. We'd all like to just be doing our research, but it's important that we um, recognize that we need to spend time um, you know, generating collaborations and networks, looking for opportunities for funding. And oftentimes by partnering with other people, you can get resources that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. So I think that that is a challenge we all experience. Specifically in my field, um, working with wildlife, as you can imagine, um, our elephants don't just walk in a clinic door and uh, give us their ear for a blood sample. So there's some challenges with with getting access to our, our patients, our uh, study subjects. Um, sometimes it can be dangerous and sometimes it can be very difficult in a much longer process that occurs with other, other types of studies. Would you describe your educational path as an early evidence or a mix of circumstances? Oh, very good question. I think that I always wanted to be a scientist. I always wanted to work in the veterinary or animal field. Um, I believe that um, through perseverance and keeping that dream in front of you, that you can get, get there. It may take a long time, and people, as an American, um, coming from the Midwest, and I always wanted to work in Africa, um, as a young person, people would say, you're never going to get to do that, you know, just keep up on that dream. But um, it's only late in my career that I've actually been able to achieve that dream. But again, it's through perseverance, and it's also through looking for and creating opportunities. So I think it's a mix of both. There is a great deal of enthusiasm in the TB research field at the moment, following hopes of um, development of a, of a vaccine or many vaccines. Um, 
we know that this has been long coming for so many years so do you share that enthusiasm or do you think that it it might require a little bit more time than what we have been encouraged to believe lately i really do believe that um the research that's being done in the field of TB, particularly about vaccines, but even on a bigger picture scale, is so exciting. The advances that are occurring, the work that people are starting to bring together, looking at not just one aspect of the disease, but trying to pull together all the different pieces that are going to help us solve this problem and overcome this very complex disease. But I'm personally very excited that we're really at the cusp of, of breakthroughs. So we're going to end this on a bonus question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your thoughts, your final thoughts. So if there were um, a last message that you would leave to um, all those who are who would get a chance to, to, to fall on this video sometime. What would that be? And um, if you could add, a, add a, a specific note to a female audience, because we know it's a, it's a great deal on our continent, but also in the research field, something that would focus on, 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 on this very special uh, uh, group of people. I think that's, that's a wonderful thing that you brought up, because uh, although over the years, we're getting more and more diversity in science. Um, we still have a long way to go, and in particular, in the field I'm in with wildlife, it's been very male-dominated. Um, people think that you need to be big and strong in order to do certain types of work, and in fact, what I say is that um, you just have to be smarter. And I think that oftentimes women um, bring a different type of creative problem solving because we, we can't do it just by brute strength. And they can bring that to bench top science as well as out in the field. I think um, women have a different attitude toward uh, science and by working together with men and, and with the whole diverse scientific community, I really hope that um, that women will see that they can achieve as successfully as men in the field. And in some ways, I think they're better because when we reach out to our patients, our study subjects, our stakeholders, um, government that are making decisions about health policies, in some ways you need people that have different communication style and I think women can do that. Well, we're done. So this was uh, Caleb Mwefong, a PhD student and uh, Immunopedia Ambassador and we've been talking to Professor Miller, Michelle. Professor Miller, it was nice talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you.